to Commons Current Events Roundtable. Today we have a very exciting program with one of my favorite guests who has returned, Dr. David Hacker, who is our chemical engineer, and we're going to be talking about the nuclear power option. We're not talking about nuclear bombs, but we're talking about nuclear power. Welcome, David, again, and it's exciting to have you back. I just want to read a little something to our audience, our viewers, and this is because there, there's still some public perceptions of nuclear power that must be addressed if any process is to be made. And there is the general fear in our own country of anything nuclear. The unreasoned fear has to be dispelled. However, a recent survey has indicated that in nations where there are nuclear power plants already in operation, there is a far more enlightened view of things nuclear. So this is something that we need to address, and that's why I brought David Hacker on the show today to dispel some of the negatives about nuclear power and what nuclear power really is all about. And David, that is one of your first questions and why nuclear power is the better option to, for power and less for failure. And maybe before we address it, I think we need to talk about Chernobyl a little bit because whenever we talk about nuclear power, we're also talking about Chernobyl because people have a fear, oh my God, I don't want a nuclear power plant next to me. What happens if the whole thing ha uh, gets explodes or, or there's a leakage or something happens and I get cancer, I get some horrible disease. And um, that's why, in, why nuclear power is still very scary to people. And even to Mrs. Merkel, which is we were talking about at lunch today, that Mrs. Merkel is no longer wanting nuclear power plants where France has them and many kind of like China you were talking about, and why people are still fearful of nuclear power. You got it, David. Well, uh, let's think back to after the dropping of the bombs and the amazement that most of the public had regarding nuclear power, that it would do anything. It was a solution to all of our problems in many ways, other than the bomb effect. Let's point out how many, for example, Edward Teller was an advocate after the development of the hydrogen bomb of using nuclear power explosions to make new harbors on, in Alaska. We were interested in an aircraft that would contain a nuclear power plant. We had a long-term arrangement with the General Electric Company, for which I worked at one time, uh, to, in some way, with the Defense Department support, to build a, an aircraft with a nuclear power plant. That later became obvious why it wasn't a really good idea. Automobiles were considered to be possibilities for small nuclear power plants. And yet, you know, the nuclear inside an inside automobile. Inside the car. And you're talking about an airplane, <laughs> nuclear in. in These and, were ideas that were advanced. Oh Let's face it. This was, and the public was very much in support of these things. We had experiments going on out at the Bikini Atoll. We had experiments going on in the Los Alamos desert. We were we used troops to advance on nuclear explosions with little protection. I mean, we had such little knowledge of the after, fa the after effects of nuclear explosions. Unbelievable. Now, what happened? Well, first of all, the first decisive factor was the Chernobyl explosion. And why was that so terrible? Because we it, it spewed out radioactive elements in an area of widespread and was carried along by the winds and people in Europe were fearful that in some way it would deposit on most of the countries in Europe. It didn't happen. But what did happen was a plant that was badly designed. Remember the difference, you have to know the differences between the what I'd call American developments. We were the earliest in development of nuclear reactors, a boiling water reactor. The Chernobyl plant was not a boiling water reactor. It had no containment to speak of. So it was more or less like an open swimming pool. 
And when that explodes, that is a problem. What do you do? What happens with all the material that is in the fuel rods? They are spread around them. And there are still problems associated. In fact, you probably saw it today in the newspaper. They're still cleaning up Chernobyl. Yeah, you know, I wanted to bring up an <coughs> article um, that I um, that I saw, and it was called um, it was called the Liquidator. And these were people in Chernobyl that would go. There was an article with um, that was just in the U.S. Uh, with USA Today and the Chicago Sun Times, and uh, it was a Sergey uh, Kreslnikov who was 65 years old, and he was one of the people that were called the liquidators. They would go in and clean up. And what happened to them, there was a whole thing. They got cancer. They, got, um, they became very, very sick. A lot of them passed away. And one of the reasons was because they came in and cleaned up. In their, in their, he, here he is sitting in his sweater. It, it, they were just in their regular clothes. And he, they said the only people that came in dressed in protective suits and had respirators was the, uh, the military that were dressed protective suits. But the ordinary people, like uh, Sergei, he did not have any protective, uh, uh, in, in any protective clothing, and they became very ill. There was thyroid cancer, heart disease, respiratory, and, and, and digestive problems that happened. And so many of these people, there were 1,586 members that came in to clean and got very All right. ill. Well, you have to make a comparison. Consider what happened to Fukushima in Japan after the tsunami inundated the reactor and the reactor went out of control. And one of the reasons you told me earlier was because the plant was next to the water and when the tsunami well, uh, came, let's not, yeah, I mean, was here's there. A, there are two different problems. One is a design problem that's directly yeah. related to the Chernobyl plant and the, how it was designed, what safeguards were put in place, which were very few. As a result, the, ex the, the explosion that took place in that reactor was dramatic. On the other hand, the Fukushima plant was a boiling water reactor, standard technology, and here we had a natural occurrence, an event that was unsuspected, namely a tsunami that mm -hmm. inundates the plant and the cooling water facility. Now, we have to realize that the temperatures that are operating in nuclear power plants are extremely high. They're essentially boiling water under high pressure. That's what's happening mm -hmm. inside the, that the fuel rods where the neutrons are, expo are essentially bombarding the, the uranium in these fuel, they're all uranium rods. They begin to heat up. They heat the water that surrounds them. Now, if the water disappears, the, the melt temperature rises. That was the problem in Fukushima. It was not the problem in Chernobyl. We don't know what the well, problem was. Well, did the was tsunami have something to do with it? The tsunami it? essentially depleted the cooling water for the reactors. I see. Okay? It was, I mean, if you can imagine what a tsunami is all about, it's a wave that comes in and floods the entire city. It destroyed most of the infrastructure in that plant. That's a natural phenomenon. Maybe there would have been you know, some more success had they not built it close enough to the edge, to the water so edge. So that was that built was to the problem. edge of the water, yes, know, okay. We know a lot of things. We've learned a lot in the mm -hmm. time that we've been with nuclear mm -hmm. power. We've learned mm -hmm. how to protect the plant, how to safeguard the individuals working there. How do you provide the kind of, essentially, uh, security for the plant so it doesn't blow up? Containment is the issue. Mm -hmm. Make so you see plants today that are built with housing that are thick concrete that essentially prevent that from happening. The other problem is, of course, is loss of coolant. It's a major problem. You can't lose coolant because it keeps the temperature at a reasonable level. Mm -hmm. Okay? So there so are like problems. our air conditioning is our, what, our uh, No air conditioning. Let's not introduce no, things no, that yeah, you're but not I, but Because we use, cool, okay. we use coolant alone. in that, don't no, we, David? No, no similarity. No? I don't okay. see any similarity. I have essentially recognized that there are problems with nuclear power that we are aware of. Now, how do we overcome the problems? Right. We have learned a great deal 
in the time. We have certain problems of, for example, the production of plutonium, that, a, that is a material used in an atom bomb, that is made during the reaction in the, uh, of the fuel rod in the reactor itself. When they take out the fuel rod, they separate plutonium. We would like not to have the production of plutonium. So a lot of the effort has gone into recently is to develop schemes whereby plutonium is not produced in the plant. Well, why, David, why don't you tell our viewer why is nuclear power uh, better than what we have today, well, better than, well, like a lot of countries are still using coal. Of course. And that is even, you know, according to an article that I just read, and it tells about that coal mining kills more people than all nuclear power industry accidents since the beginning of time, and coal is more dangerous than nuclear, and it's got heavy metals, radioactive elements in coal plants, and it admits the estimated cause is 13,000 to 200 deaths uh, uh, a year. But I mean, that is don't, really... They, the, the issue really And that's according is, to the American Lung Association. Uh, the real issue that the public is fearful about is radiation poisoning, okay? Coal is not, there may be some materials in it that mm -hmm. are uh, certainly radioactive elements, but by and large, the public's perception, I, I think, it's my opinion, has been high radioactive exposure, okay? And you say the radioactive nuclear, nuclear does, does not have this that we risk discovered, anymore? No, coal, does, we don't consider that a an, an radioactive material. Mm -hmm. We worry about the exposure that we have, and we connected that after the investigations of Hiroshima and Nagasaki on the deaths caused by radi direct radiation uh, ex exposure. Mm -hmm. And that's where the problem arises. So that the people who have felt insecure as a result of that, well, there is a reason not to have nuclear power plants at all. And I'm, really, I'm convinced that until people realize that, for the most part, we have had an enormously successful relationship with nuclear power plants in this country, enormously. Three Mile Island was an exception, and that in itself was not a terrible incident when we look at it in retrospect. And that happened in 1979. And that's 1979. As right. a result of that, we made two decisions. One, do not produce more nuclear power plants. Jimmy Carter signed an order at the time that essentially halted most of the development of nuclear power. So here was a country that had developed the concept, that had, it had an enormous uh, investment in nuclear reactor design. We had the major reactor designs in the world. We were selling them to everyone. He stopped that. As a result, someone else will pick up the information and do the same thing, and I think that's what happened. So we are at, and essentially at fault. We are depending on other people to do our research in nuclear reactor design. Well, let me ask or, you something, yes. David. Why is nuclear, why do you feel that nuclear is so much better than other well, it's the uh, only solution fuels. we have to eliminating greenhouse gas uh, emissions. Greenhouse, uh, greenhouse greenhouse gas emissions. Right, right. The only one it doesn't produce greenhouse it doesn't produce carbon dioxide. Every fossil fuel that we know of, including natural gas, produces carbon dioxide. Mm -hmm. Carbon dioxide is one of the major elements in greenhouse gas emissions that we're talking about. That is essentially producing the blanket that is keeping or essentially accelerating the heating up of the planet. Okay, stop it. How do you stop it? Well, if you, if you reduce your dependence on coal operation or fossil fuels, this is basically the argument of the Sierra Club. Stop fossil fuel usage mm -hmm. in general mm -hmm. at, at any level. And everything you see going on today is related to that mission, okay? So, but the fact is that you can't have it both ways. You can't have a modern industrial society that depends on enormous uses of electricity, which, by the way, uh, 